I just discovered a bug in window maker that's very odd because I'm using it for quite some time now and I never discovered any bug but this time it's 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 a neat bug I don't know if it is reproducible under any conditions but it is reproducible now so I show it to you I go this is workspace 81 I'm right now yeah 81 now I'm trying to go to 82 and yeah it happened you see shows me a fatal error meaning that it re uh, received the six sec folds which is a fatal error in a signal error in Unix which means that there are some um, wrong memory operation or something like that, like that, and the, p the process is getting killed by the operating system, and that's what just happened. Yeah, great. You now have the option to restart. Uh, that's what I do. Great. I mean, I never noticed this before. I suppose it's a special condition right now. Uh, that's very strange. That's really strange because Windowmaker is a very stable uh, piece of software. But that shows you that any software that is, a little, that is a little more complex will have, well, bugs. The system is complex enough. There are there are always bugs. That's well it needs you some time to well discover them. Hmm, should report it. Hmm. Well, that's 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 really strange. Anyway, ah, I'm taking the opportunity to show you uh, something. Yeah, this is the encoder. One more time. I did this yesterday on a video on the second part of the video. However, it was rejected by YouTube. So I'm doing this again. Uh, we need the encoder demonstration. That's that one. That's the board. Ah. I've just got a little spam mail. Collecting that later. Yeah, that's the board we did yesterday. Um, it has a seven segment display on it and a little microcontroller and a tiny twenty three thirteen and the encoder switch. Um this the encoder switch I can show you the part itself. Mm, dum -dum. Here it is. Right, and that's the board. It's already tinned now. That's the board. You see? Yeah. I, yeah. I'm holding it in the right way. Well, of course, that's the back side. Uh, the view you see on the monitor would be the top view. That would be that view. That. Yeah. Okay. This is the encoder. It, you can click it. Yeah. And you can screw it. That's a little with one hand. Oh, this is a little uh, yeah, you can do this with it. And uh the point is the encoder is just a special form of switch. That's why it is called an encoder switch. Um I'm going to the schematic to demonstrate this because there's a circuit demonstrating the function. Yeah, come on. Uh switch is is here. Yeah, you see uh push this means there's just a uh, um that switch here. You know. Right. And that's the other switch. That that switch is generating what is called a gray code. Um the special thing about it is no, uh, you turn the um, this, the encoder, and then the state of the switch changes here. Right, this is generating a square signal. Yeah, the frequency depends on how fast you turn the switch. And a special thing about it, if I turn it left or right, it doesn't make any difference because it will always change the state. If it wouldn't you wouldn't even notice that something has changed. And in order to get the direction you need both uh, both signals. The one is always high, the other is always low. 
So, and you can decode it by comparing the phases of the, of the two signals. Uh, let's, it's like a mathematical operation in a, a group, in a finite group set two, a set two, which um, if you add one or subtract one, it's always the same operation. Plus and minus is the same operation in, in such a group. And that's what's happening here. So, by reading only one switch, you would never know what direction it is. Actually, the principle of this encoder um, is the principle of a classical computer mouse, um, with the difference that the classical computer mouse uh, has two X's and the encoder has just one X. So, um, that's how a classical computer mouse works. And the encoder itself can be used to well, realize manuals, for example, all sorts of manuals and stuff. Uh, you can uh, turn it, and then you can select the menu item, and by clicking, you can yeah, do the actual uh, selection. That's, that's the application these things can be used. Uh, I have those same encoders, a little more sophisticated ones, because this is a mechanical encoder. You would hear it clicking, yeah, right? And on my oscilloscope, I've got also en uh, those encoders, but those are optical. You see, you wouldn't, you, you don't hear a sound because those things are optical, have a higher resolution, and are optical, and that's that's quite nice because uh, from a user point of view of the of the device, if you turn it on, it always can go to a well either a saved or predefined state, and this does just not depend on uh, the well status of the switch, on the position of the switch or the encoder because it's, um, the actual uh, well um, control is, is getting done by the firmware, by the software. So this is, this is a very, very neat uh, concept. Yeah, as soon as, uh, as I assembled um, the circuit, we will show this uh, how, uh, I will show you how it works on the scope and also how the switch works. A little demonstration um, I did is let's go back to the skim to the board. I turn it right, um, the display will increase, <coughs> I turn it left, it will decrease, and if I uh, press the switch, uh, the dot is going on or off. 